One of the big benefits of developing AGI open source is that you can leverage resources all around the world and in all sorts of institutions all around the world. With an open source project, you can work with universities, you can work with private companies, you can work with government agencies, you can work with private individuals who are just AGI enthusiasts and want to help the work along. All these different kinds of institutions can collaborate together on the same project. We've had OpenCog developers in every continent except Antarctica, uh, all different ages, many different careers and walks of life. We didn't really know what to expect when we made our AI system an open source project. In 2001, we launched the Novamente Cognition Engine as a proprietary AI system. Development wasn't going as fast as we hoped within our startup company, uh, Novamente LLC. In 2001, we launched an AI system called the Novamente Cognition Engine within our startup company, Novamente LLC. And by 2008, it was clear development wasn't going as fast as we hoped. So we decided to open source the project. We created OpenCog, which contained large chunks of our Novamente Cognition Engine code, not everything, and we released it on the world as an open source project. We didn't know quite what to expect. We did get a number of individual contributors, just random AGI enthusiasts from around the world who wanted to help out, who wanted to see true AI general AI come about and were willing to put some of their spare time into the project. But one of the more interesting things to happen when we open sourced OpenCog was that we got involvement from universities in Asia. First of all, I began a collaboration with Xiamen University in China. Xiamen's a small city on an island in Fujian province that's right across the water from Taiwan. I started working with students in Xiamen University on developing various aspects of OpenCog and especially on using OpenCog to control humanoid robots, these little now humanoid robots, these little white robots made in France. So OpenCog controls these guys to walk around and hold simple conversations. The work with OpenCog and the now humanoid robots never would have been undertaken unless we'd made OpenCog an open source project because the university doesn't let their students participate in companies' proprietary projects as part of their studies. The next big thing that happened in Asia for OpenCog was a collaboration between my startup, Novamente LLC, and Hong Kong Polytechnic University. We got a Hong Kong government grant where Novamente put in part of the money, the Hong Kong government put in the rest of the money. And due to this government grant, we have a team of six AI programmers sitting in a lab at Hong Kong Polytechnic University working on using OpenCog to control intelligent game characters. There's two purposes to the project. One is to create smart game characters that we can eventually roll out commercially within a game, make money, reach a lot of people. The other is just to advance OpenCog as an AGI system because a video game world, a virtual world, is a great playground, a great testing ground for a lot of our AI ideas. If you look at what you have in a simple video game world, you have perception, you have action, you have linguistic and social interaction, you have events unfolding over time, you have the need for an agent to carry out reasoning to achieve its goals. Pretty much everything that an AGI system needs to do is contained in a simple form in a video game world. That's what we're playing with now in Hong Kong due to the grant we got from the Hong Kong government.
which was enabled by the open sourcing of OpenCog. The kind of grant we got, again, couldn't be gotten for a purely proprietary commercial project. Working on AGI here in China has been a lot of fun. It's a really high energy environment. In some ways it reminds me of the US during the dot-com boom in the late 1990s. I remember when I did my first AI startup, WebMind, in New York in the late 90s, there was just enthusiasm all around. You had young people really believing they could change the world with technology. It was a really exciting time. The company was on Broad Street in the Wall Street district in an area called Silicon Alley, which was every bit as exciting as Silicon Valley out in California. There was really an atmosphere of positive enthusiasm. Young people forming into teams, forming new companies, really believing they could change the world with technology. Of course, there's still a lot of amazing science and technology happening in America. But you don't quite have the same atmosphere, the same level of enthusiasm you did in the late 90s. But when you look in Shanghai, in Beijing, in Hong Kong, you do see that energy. You see young people coming together to build amazing new technologies, really believing they're going to own the future believing that they're going to do something important that's going to change the world. I'm not sure if I believe this is going to be the Pacific century and the U.S. is going to sort of fade into a secondary role, but I do think that China is going to rise in a few decades. If we don't have a singularity first, China will be on par with America, at least, in terms of science and technology development. And you can see the beginnings of that right now. In terms of artificial intelligence development, the vast bulk of AI work in the world is still going on in the US. On the other hand, the American AI scene is dominated by certain preconceived notions. America has had more success in AI than anybody else, but they've had success following certain directions. And they're going to keep on funding researchers following those same directions. What you see in Asia, what you see in China and Korea, you see the willingness to fund all sorts of out there new AI ideas. They don't have as long a history in AI as America. And because of that, they don't have as many preconceived notions. They're willing to take a flyer on something wacky just to see what happens. For OpenCog, which is a new approach to AI, a new set of ideas, a new set of technologies. We've actually found an easier time getting traction here in China than in America, because they don't have as many preconceived ideas about what AI is supposed to be like. They just know they need artificial intelligence. They want to have intelligent robots. They want to have smart power systems. They want to have AI helping them to coordinate everything that's going on in their countries. They know where they want to go. They don't know what technology is going to get them there. So they're willing to invest in various interesting alternatives, hoping something will work out. This is the kind of spirit of adventure that we had in America in the dot-com boom. Back in the late 90s, we knew the internet was going to be something huge. We knew the internet would change the world, but we didn't know quite how. So there was a great willingness to just invest in anything internet related. No one really knew what was going on, but they knew some of the things they were investing in were going to be really big and have a huge impact. I don't see that kind of adventurousness in the US technology investment world right now. It's more like people are looking for a sure thing. People are looking for things they feel will give them short-term returns with a fairly high degree of certainty. Whereas what I see here in China, there's more of a willingness to think in the long term. There's more willingness to speculate. Whether this will cause China to ascend over the US, I don't know. But it's going to bring it a long way from where it is now. Right now, China is still a baby in the AI world. But through funding projects like OpenCog here, 
it's going to progress really fast.